So Carly, exploring that idea that you've just introduced us to of this interconnectedness of within Indigenous knowledge systems, um, I want to share a good example of that um, from Gamilaroi's story. Um, so the story of, um, of Gawarge, the, the celestial emu. Um, and this is quite a common theme across not only Gamilaroi, but, but many um, cultures across this land have, have very similar stories to this as well. It's quite a common theme. Um, and this actually introduces a, another concept which we call dark constellations, mm -hmm. which uses those dark patches in the in between the stars. And as we can sort of see in this image here behind us, the, the beautiful Milky Way that we get stretched across our night sky here in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and we can actually see um, with that, we can overlay the, the celestial emu on that. Um, and this is the first appearance of the emu that we see. So this happens early on in the year, sort of April or May, that time of the year. Um, and this looks like the emu in full sprint. So what this signified was the, the female emu chasing the male emu. And so that's how we knew it was breeding season. So we knew that there would be eggs out in the emu nest. We could go out and we could hunt those emu eggs as a source of food. And then as the year sort of goes on, the, the sky rotates. Mm -hmm. And now we get that, that um, sort of Milky Way. Now it's sort of stretched in the other direction now. And now if we overlay um, what, what the emu looks like here, the emu's now got its sort of head pointing down towards the earth and we can no longer see those legs of the emu. And so what that signified was the male emu sitting on the nest. And so that's how we knew that the, uh, the eggs were beginning to hatch and so that it was time to stop hunting those emu eggs so that the, the emu population didn't die out and that we would have that sustainable food source going on. And then again, even later in the year, so we're coming into the end of the year now, sort of November, that sort of time, and the Milky Way gets very low on the horizon there. And now if we overlay the emu on this, we can sort of see the emu's body is just above the horizon there. And so this was the, the emu with its head in the watering hole. And so that's how we knew that the, the spring rains had been, the watering holes were full, and then we could go up, we could collect that water, and we would have that as a, as a resource. And so now what we can see from this over the year and over the, the celestial emu's appearance in the sky, mm -hmm. we've got that connection between the sky knowledge and the land knowledge. So what's happening with the animals, with the emus and with their breeding patterns, but also with the water usage and the water mm -hmm. management and what's happening in that. And so this is a great example of that interconnectedness between our sky knowledge, our land knowledge, our water knowledge and all of those systems interplaying in one story.